Hey, what up? It's your boy. You know, there's one really interesting thing about the Japanese society. And I'm not just talking about all the weird, quirky things that exist in the country, like uh, vending machines at every street corner or the, the, the weird porn that is created. I don't know why those were the first two examples I thought of. But if there's one thing that is super interesting from a cultural perspective, at least in terms of how the West views Japan, is that I think when people think of Japan or Japanese things, a lot of people are very quick to be like, you know, Japan is such a, a, a technologically advanced country. Everything is so advanced, man. So many things in Japan are so handy and dandy that we don't have over in the West. Man, why can't we be on the next level of humanity like Japan is? Which is, uh, you know, understandable in a lot of aspects, but also at the same time, there are a lot of things about Japanese culture which is uh, very much stuck in the past. And today's news that has been covered on all sorts of different news websites, and I'm sure it made its rounds over on Twitter not too long ago as well. I'm actually quite late to this news, but uh, I'm looking at the Vice World News site on it. And uh, yeah, it says here, Japanese schools are still banning ponytails because they could sexually excite men. You heard that right, ladies and gentlemen. Japanese schools are banning the ponytail. Bruh. If you watch anime, read manga, know anything about Japanese culture, you would know that seeing ponytails is sort of seen as this kind of neat, very Japanese thing. Even though ponytails are kind of this worldwide thing, I think it's just the fact that Japan has done a very good job of, I guess, fetishizing or making ponytails look sexy, especially through, like, anime girls and stuff like that. But that may be no more from here on out, ladies and gentlemen, because it's just too sexy, man. Like, like, a ponytail, every time a guy sees a ponytail, they just instant nut. It says here in this article, they're worried boys will look at girls, which is similar to the reasoning behind upholding a white-only underwear color rule. I've always criticized these rules, but because there's such a lack of criticism and it's become so normalized, students have no choice but to accept them. And yes, when they say white-only color underwear rule, that is legitimately a thing that is being used in some Japanese schools. Yes, they even go so far as to the point where you can't wear underwear that is not the color white, because any other color might excite the male population and the male teachers. As if all men are just a bunch of bulls who react to any color that is not white. It says that there are no nationwide statistics on how many schools still impose a ponytail ban, but a 2020 survey suggests that about 1 in 10 schools in the southern prefecture of Fukuoka prohibited the hairstyle. Which uh, it seems like a lot when you just say 1 in 10 schools, but you have to understand this is just in the prefecture of Fukuoka, which is only one of 47 prefectures in Japan. So Technically speaking, this is actually quite a, a rare occurrence, I would like to believe, if the rest of the prefectures also have this kind of 1 in 10 statistic. I'd like to think that it's mostly only the very primmy, kind of private, higher class type of expensive schools, like, you know, the, the kind of princess schools and the prince schools, and, you, you know, very much like a lot of, like, the high-end private schools. And I think in a lot of ways as well, it most likely deals with probably a lot of, like, all-girls schools as well, just so that, you know, the, the girls at these kinds of schools can be, quote-unquote, protected from the potentially sex-crazed male teachers that uh, supposedly exist in Japan. I mean, look, I'm not going to come out here and sugarcoat everything to say that, you know, these kinds of very predatory male teachers don't exist in Japan, because of course they do. I'd like to argue that probably every country has a handful of really crappy teachers that are like that. But in also saying that, um, is it exactly a ponytail that is setting off the alarms for a lot of these teachers? Uh, no, I don't think so. And again, this really just goes to show how old school and outdated a lot of these rule makers are in the Japanese administration of schools and the, and the board meetings and stuff like that because uh, I don't know a single person who looked at a girl passing by in the street, saw that they had a ponytail, saw that they had an exposed neck because of the ponytail, and went, damn. 
I really want to get with her. Not to say that girls don't look good or immediately sexy with ponytails or that there are many men who fetishize the ponytail, but, uh, you know, it, it's a bit of a stretch. A ponytail ban is just one of many draconian rules known as buraku kousoku imposed on schools or students in Japan. The laundry list of restrictions also dictate the shade of students' underwear and socks, skirt length, and eyebrow shape. Yeah, apparently your eyebrows can also be too sexy. Hair color is another contentious issue. Some schools demand photographic proof from students of their natural hair color if it isn't strictly black and straight, which, you know, for one, is just your typical xenophobia culture in Japan, but also, two, uh, you know, I totally believe in this hair color thing because, weirdly enough, my school also had this kind of draconian rule where I went to an all-boys school in Australia and not only were we not allowed to dye our hair, it had to be the natural color, but also it had to be of a certain length, as in the hair couldn't go below the eye eyebrows, over the ears, and over the collar. But, uh, you know, even if that rule was kind of strict, because, you know, I did go to, like, a private school and stuff like that, so it kind of makes sense, but, you know, I didn't have to, like, send in a photo proof of the fact that this was my natural hair color. But the second point, and more importantly, the reason why this is just such an unsurprising draconian set of rules that implies in a lot of Japanese schools especially, is just purely the fact that Japan, at the end of the day, is a collectivist society. By saying that, what I mean is that individualism and uniqueness in an individual amongst a group or a society is not something that is exactly rewarded or looked up towards. You can be walking through the streets of Japan and immediately notice one very quick thing. And, and you know, thinking this and saying this doesn't necessarily make you racist or any of that kind of bullshit, right? But I guarantee, right, when you come to Japan, any part of Japan, and you'll be walking through the town, any suburb, any street, the one thing that you'll probably think to yourself immediately is, damn, Everyone looks exactly the fucking same. And that's because, again, Japan is, at the end of the day, a collectivist society where if you are not blending in with everyone else around you, you are going to be the one that is pointed at and laughed at and shunned from the group. Basically, you will be put on a societal death row of not being able to properly blend in with the people around you, not being able to blend in with a culture and a society, which Japan in a lot of ways, takes very seriously societally. And what better way than to make sure that that point is driven home more than by implying those rules from a young age, more specifically in schools. Often the reasons behind imposing such rules were arbitrary. For example, schools that ban bony tails often allow bob hairstyles, even if they expose about as much of the neck as ponytails do. And yeah, that's the one part that I personally just couldn't fucking comprehend when it came to this story, is the fact that why only specifically ponytails? Is it because ponytails are more fetishized in fiction, are more fetishized just in general? I don't, or, you know, perhaps the person, one of the board members who made this role some, you know, half a century ago was like really just personally infatuated with the ponytail and just couldn't get over the fact that every person who had a ponytail was just immediately a sexual target for, towards them. I personally don't know, but you don't have to be a cultural expert in Japan to realize how bullshit of a rule that is, and it's very double standard. But I could call dates back to the 1870s when the Japanese government established its first systematic regulation of education. In the 1970s and 80s, rules became increasingly restrictive in an attempt to reduce bullying and violence in schools. See, they say that it was to reduce bullying and violence in schools because, again, it goes back to that whole collectivist society. If you look different from the crowd, you are a prime target for bullying. It kind of sucks, but that's just how it goes in a collectivist society. So people don't want to be exposed to that. People don't want to be a victim towards that. So what do they do? They try to look and act like 
everybody else around them so that they can nicely fit into the system. But at the same time, these are students. These are real people's lives. These are real children's lives that you are shaping up and influencing from a young age. We're literally at this point, if the ponytail is going to get banned, something as harmless as a fucking ponytail is going to be banned from schools, then Every person who comes out of every school in Japan is going to be like a clone of themselves. We're just going to have a fucking army of clone children going out into society. Everybody having the same interests, the same style, the same look, the same personality. We're just shitting these people out into society. And what's going to happen? That's going to stagnate Japan on a cultural level. And when one random student, for example, decides, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I don't want to conform to everybody else around me. I want to pursue what I want to pursue because that's what the West is doing. That's what the rest of the world thinks and believes is the best thing to do then they, again, are going to be put on societal death row. I guarantee that that is going to start happening just due to the fact that, again, internationalism and globalization in Japan and amongst Japanese youth is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger because of the spread of the internet, because of the spread of internet culture amongst young kids. More and more kids are getting exposed to more things outside of Japan thanks to the internet. And when these kids look at these non-Japanese things on the internet, realize how different the rest of the countries are across the pond and think to themselves, hey, I want to be like that. That's kind of cool. That's kind of different. They're expressing their uniqueness. They're not conforming to everybody else around them. I want to do that as well. Then again, it's just going to be a bad time for them because the culture is just shaped up to be completely different. Look, a lot of you might be thinking, Joe, you're kind of taking this a little too far, dude. It's, it's just like a, a ponytail thing. But you got to look at it in the grander scale of things, right? Because again, this imposing of this stupid rule of banning ponytails is, is not the first time Japan has done some real ass backwards shit. For example, it says here in this very article, uh, in elementary and middle school some 40 years ago when long skirts were worn by skiba or delinquent girls. For that reason, long skirts were banned and made shorter, but now schools don't allow short skirts and are lengthening them. So again, they are backpedaling like fucking crazy. The double standards are insane and they just don't know what they want. Do they want to ban ponytails and just make everyone conform and just become the same clone person or do they want to you know kind of fit with the times and evolve and change because again when it comes to the whole ponytail shit it's completely ass backwards from a cultural standpoint because you have all of these teachers who are like oh no we're, we're, we're protecting the girls we don't want them to be a, a victim of students and teachers of the male variety being you know sexually torn tormented and stared and gawked at throughout their entire life just because they're showing a little bit of their nape. While at the same time, Japan fetishizes high school girls in a lot of their adult content, in a lot of fiction, and just schools in general outside and inside of the entire adult market. So so it's like, what do you guys want? Do you guys want to sexualize these kids or do you not want to sexualize these kids? Make up your fucking mind. Also, again, remind me of a person who was last sexually incited because they saw the nape of a woman's neck. Like, what are we, the fucking Amish now? Are we about to impose thicker socks because we want to hide those sexy ankles? So yeah, again, this is just another typical example of Japan just being completely ass backwards in the rules that they impose because it's this ever-going struggle of wanting to change the rules and the traditions for the better while also at the same time adhering to those traditions and respecting the traditions that have been created for all of these generations. I think if it wasn't for the fact that a lot of these people who make up these rules in school administrations are people from the older generations who clearly have different belief systems and different views on the world that in a lot of cases are completely outdated in today's standards, then we wouldn't be seeing ridiculous news articles like this. If I were to have any say in any of these kind of school board meetings, I would just straight up say, hey, why don't you let ladies and gentlemen, these boys and girls, high school boys and girls, I don't know, do whatever the fuck they want. If a girl wants to wear a ponytail, let her wear a ponytail. If a guy 
wants to wear a ponytail because this is 2022 we're not judging you then let them wear a ponytail as well again i don't know how hairstyles can suddenly uh, link to oh you are just a, a horrible person or you you are not fit for having that kind of hairstyle and you know it's kind of a similar story to when the the husband or the boyfriend of the the imperial uh princess uh was shown with a ponytail and the country went up in arms over the fact that this man had a man bun like who cares you know if if the dude wants to have a man bun let him have a man bun i personally think he kind of rocked the man man bun but uh, a lot of uh, imperialist japanese people were like hell no man buns are for pussies and he ain't no pussy so yeah at the end of the day if uh, a school wants to ban a ponytail um, i mean that that's kind of on them i mean if i was looking around for high schools in japan to send my kid to and uh and the school that i wanted to send my daughter to said no ponytails then uh you know I just won't let my kid go into that school because I'm not sending my kid to a school to create a fucking clone of all of their classmates and basically take out all uniqueness and individualism from that kid because I think that's a horrible thing for a school establishment to ever do. I'm not saying that, you know, they, they should enforce it so that, hey, you can have any color of hair you want, you can have any hairstyle you want. Of course, there are limits, but, you know, banning ponytails for the bullshit reason of the possibility of sexually enticing men is just it's just sexist it's just sexism hidden in a veil of protecting the kids because it's not protecting the kids it's just stealing their individuality and being fucking misogynistic ridiculous story let me know what you think about it down in the comments below and thanks for watching guys uh hey if you enjoyed this video then uh why don't you smack my face right here to subscribe to the channel let's keep making big channel number go bigger and over here next to my head is a couple more videos you can check out as well if you enjoyed this one and if there are any articles news topics that you would like me to talk about in future videos like this one then send them to me over on my social media stuff links down in the description below. But yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.